Hello all, uh, welcome to my channel Weight Lecture. Today we will discuss multiple choice questions on veterinary pharmacology. Okay, uh, questions number first. Food preservatives that is uh, employed in uh, commercial pet food that is option A, salicylic acid, options B, boric acid, option C, benzoic acid or options D, monosodium glutamate. The right answer is option C that is a benzoic acid. Okay, the food uh, preservatives which is included in commercial pet food that is benzoic acid. Actually, benzoic acid is used as antimicrobial preservatives which is used in food and beverage, especially in carbonated beverage. As it presents uh, its uh, highest antibacterial activity at pH uh, 2.5 to 4. Benzoic acid uh, has inhibitory effect on the proliferation of a bacteria in yeast which is the major cause of food spoilage. Questions number second. The pharmacological response to drug acting through nuclear receptor normally occur options A within millisecond, options B within minute, option C after a booster dose or options D after a day or week. The right answer is options uh, D that is uh, after a day or a week. Uh, the pharmacological response uh, uh, of drug uh, act, uh, that acting through that uh, nuclear receptors normally shown that response after a day or week. This nuclear receptors uh, are a class of a protein which is responsible uh, for sensing steroid, uh, thyroid hormones, vitamins and certain other molecules which uh, act through that uh, nuclear receptor. Okay. Questions number uh, three, a drug interacting with receptor but does not elicit response is called options A, agonist, options B, orphan drug. Option C, antagonist or options D, placebo. The right answer is option uh, C, that is the antagonist. A drug uh, which is interacting uh, with receptors and also that uh, elicits response uh, is known as agonist. While a drugs that interacting with receptor but does not produce any response, that is known as antagonist. And the drugs that doesn't have any receptor, that is known as orphan drugs. Uh, and um, and it is not actually a drug, it is a non-therapeutic agent, for example, nutritive agents like water, uh, but also elicits response as like of uh, agonist, uh, such type of uh, treatment is known as placebo. Questions number uh, four, the pre-systemic metabolism of a drug before reaching a systemic circulation is called options A, first pass effect, options B, lethal synthesis, option C, functional metabolism or options D, synthetic metabolism. The right answer is option A, that is a uh, first pass effect. And the pre-systemic circulations uh, uh, metabolisms of a drug before reaching to that systemic circulation that is known as first pass effect. If we see that first pass effects, it's mainly include uh, there is a uh, hepatic metabolisms that's metabolism by mean of liver and metabolism by intestinal wall enzymes, metabolism by intestinal uh, flora. Okay, uh, if the drug uh, that is subject to hepatic uh, their uh, first pass effect uh, at that conditions. Uh, we give that uh, that drugs will be more effective if we given it higher dose in oral okay and the if the chemical analogs which is resistant to that hepatic metabolism should be given orally okay and response to that oral uh, drug is more in the presence of uh, when there is a liver dysfunctions is occur okay and the first pass effects actually decrease the bioavailability of drug that's a percentage of drugs that reach to that uh, uh, into the, the blood circulations in unchanged form okay uh, and a note, there's a note that enzyme inductions by a drug is only of a specific isoenzyme, okay. Hepatic cytochrome P450 activity is actually inhibited by the continuous use of like a cimetidine, spironolactone, uh, ethyl estradiols, such type of drug, okay. In the presence of a uh, severe hepatic disease, uh, we prefer to give them that ionizable drugs because that ionizable drugs are easily to that excrete out uh, through the body. Uh, since the main function of the liver is uh, to convert that unionized form drug to that ionizable form, okay, so that um, in case of severe hepatic disease, we already given those drugs which are in ionizable form, okay. Questions number uh, five, interhepatic circulation options A, take place uh, with drug which are excreted in the free form in bile. Option number B, does not affect plasma half-life of drug. Option number C, decrease by drugs which uh, sterilize the gut. Or options number D, doesn't take place if a drug is given parenterally. The right answer is option uh, C, that is a uh, decrease by a drug which uh, sterilize the gut. Okay. Enterohepatic circulation uh, refer to the process whereby a drug or a, a metastable metabolite thereof in the liver is uh, secreted into that bile. 
and then stored in that gallbladder and subsequently released into the small intestine and again that uh, drugs uh, get a uh, breakdown in a small intestine and uh, reabsorb back into the circulations and subsequently return to the liver lead to that increase the half life of the drug this condition is known as enterohepatic circulation okay questions number 6 uh, in the first order of kinetic of drug clearance options a the plasma concentrations uh, dash time curve is linear options b plasma concentration is reduced to 25% after two half life option number c a fixed amount of drug is eliminated in a unit time option number d urinary excretion is primarily mode of clearance so the right answer is options number d that is a urinary excretion is primary mode of clearance okay we have a uh, two order of kinetic of drug elimination that is first order of kinetic of drug eliminations and second is that uh, zero order of kinetic of drug eliminations okay in first order of kinetic of drug eliminations it is stated that the amount of drug that eliminated per unit of time uh, changes uh, with the concentration of a drug in the blood when the concentration of the drug in the blood is high then uh, the amount of the drug that excreted uh, from the body is also in high okay uh, this type of but the the but the but the like uh, the the constant fraction of the drugs in the body is eliminated per unit of time in first order of kinetic okay while in zero of order of kinetics that also known as uh, saturation kinetics in which uh, metabolizable enzymes get uh, saturated where the rate of that uh, elimination of a drug is independent of a plasma concentration of the drug okay questions number 7 uh, death due to cobra in venomation is due to options a acute paralysis options b hemolysis option c respiratory arrest option d hypotension the right answer is option c that is a respiratory arrest death due to that cobra in venomation is actually due to uh, that arrest respiratory arrest okay questions number 8 uh, if therapeutic index of a given drug sir uh, let 8 uh, it means the drug is options a extremely unsafe options b relatively safe option c extremely safe or options d harmless the right answer is option sub b that is relatively safe okay uh, the if the therapeutic index of any given drug's uh, uh, value is 8 it's mean the drug is relatively safe because uh, it imply that a lethal um, in order to reach that lethal dose of a drugs which is eight times greater uh, than the effective dose of the drugs okay therapeutic index actually the ratio of a toxic dose uh, 50 uh, upon that effective dose 50 questions number 9 prostaglandin are essentially metabolized in options a kidney options b plasma option c liver option d lungs the right answer is options d that is lungs okay Uh, prostaglandins are essentially metabolized in lungs okay uh, on secreted into the peripheral circulations most of prostaglandin uh, with exception of like uh, prostacyclin and uh, uh, thromboxane a2 uh, uh, other prostaglandins are rapidly metabolized in the lungs by a enzyme that is called 15 hydroxy prostaglandin dehydrogenase okay this enzyme uh, selectively oxidize the hydroxyl group uh, at carbon 50 into that 15 keto moiety and make it uh, that uh, make it it in excretable form questions number 10 uh, the analgesic effect of opioid uh, is mediated via options a mu receptor options b beta receptor option c delta receptor option d m receptor the right answer is option a that is a mu receptor okay uh, the analgesic effect of uh, opioids is actually uh, mediated via mu receptors uh, opioid receptors uh, are actually that pain receptors is a group of uh, inhibitory g uh, protein coupled receptors gaba uh, with uh, opioids as ligand okay uh, if we see that endogenous opioids uh, in our uh, body that is our dynorphin enkephalin endorphin endomorphin and nociceptions these are uh, released by our uh, own body in order to decrease the pain okay uh, if we see the classification of that opioid uh, receptor then we found there is are mainly three types of receptor that is mu receptor delta receptors and kappa receptors and the function of this uh, uh, mu delta and kappa receptors are as follow like uh, that uh, mu receptors uh, functions mainly work as uh, supraspinal and spinal analgesia uh, also acts like sedations 
for inhibition of respiration too slow gastrointestinal transit times modulation of hormones and neurotransmitter uh, release similarly delta receptors uh, major functions include supraspinous and spinal analgesia modulation of hormones and neurotransmitter release similarly kappa receptors uh, functions include supraspinous and spinal analgesia uh, psychomimetic effect and also slow gastrointestinal transit times too okay and if we see that's affinities of this endogenous uh, opioids then we found that uh, uh, in in mu receptor that endorphin is more um, potent as compared to that enkephalin and dynorphin similarly in delta receptors enkephalin is uh, most potent uh, followed by endorphin and then dynorphin in case of kappa receptor the dynorphin followed by endorphin and enkephalin questions number 11 one among this uh, prevent the release of acetylcholine at neuromuscular junction options a uh, chlorpromazine options b strychnine option c botulinum options d nicotine the right answer is option uh, d in, uh, the right answer is sorry option c that is botulinum okay uh, botulinums actually prevent the release of uh, acetylcholine at neuromuscular junction okay botulinum toxin which is a most potent uh, neurotoxin uh they produces paralysis by blocking presynaptic release of neurotransmitter mainly that acetylcholine at the neuromuscular junction uh, with reversibly uh, chemical uh, denervations of the muscle fiber thereby inducing partial paralysis and atrophy uh, while if we see that's other options then chlorpromazine is actually antimimetic drugs which block that histamine h1 receptors and dopamine d2 and muscarin m1 receptors in the vomiting center okay while uh, strychnine is actually competitive glycine antagonist uh glycine is actually uh, that inhibitory neurotransmitters and this is strychnine strychnine block that glycine okay uh, there is loss of normal descending inhibitory motor tone resulting in muscle spasms while nicotine uh, actually stimulate presynaptic acetylcholine receptors and enhancing that acetylcholine release and their metabolisms questions number 12 example of uh, NMDA receptor antagonist options A xylazine options B uh, diazepam option C tramadol options uh, D ketamine the right answer is options D that is a uh, ketamine okay and methyl D aspartate receptors are uh, ligand gated uh, cation channel which is actually activated by an excit excitatory neurotransmitters like glutamate okay and this receptors are located mostly at uh, excitatory synapse and thereby participate in excitatory neurotransmissions in uh, cns okay and um, if we see that's nmda uh, receptor agonist then we found that's a glutamate morphine and methyl d aspartates and cyclosporine and if we see that's nmga receptor antagonist then ketamine uh, dextromethorphan Uh, mimantine and amantadine extra questions number uh, 13 one among this therapeutic agents inhibit cytochrome p450 drug metabolic enzymes option c amoxicillin options b amikacin option c ketoconazole or options d levamisole the right answer is option uh, c that is ketoconazole drugs that inhibit uh, cytochrome p450 metabolic enzymes that is a uh, Amitri, amitripe, uh, tylen, apripetent, carvedilol, uh, chloramphenicol, cimetidine, uh, ciprofloxacin, clarithromycin, cogine, uh, jonipizil, uh, fluvoxamine, uh, haloperidol, uh, imatinib, ketoconazole, metoprolol, uh, parozetine, uh, risperidone, uh, ritonavir, tramadol, verapamil, extra. okay and drugs uh, which induces cytochrome p450 activities that's mainly includes carbamazepine griseofulvin phenobarbitals uh, phenytoin rifampicin uh, st john wort okay the uh, drugs that uh, that uh, induces cytochrome p450 activities uh, when given with another drugs that lead to that uh, uh, that another drugs uh, metabolisms fast and excretion throughout the body while the drugs which inhibit cytochrome p450 when given along with another drugs then it leads to uh, decreases uh, uh, the excretions and metabolisms of that drugs questions number 14 a drug of choice for treatment of marsa which is a methicillin resistant uh, staphylococcus aureus is options a ceftriazone options b vancomycin option c piperacin option d amoxicillin the right answer is options b that is a vancomycin okay 
the drug of choice for treatment of a MARSA, that is vancomycin. Drug of choice for treatment of uh, trichomoniasis, that is a uh, metronidazole. Drug of choice for treatment of e canis, that is a uh, doxycycline. Uh, if we see that's antitherial drugs, that is a uh, drug of choice is buparvacuans. And also halofuginin, lactate is also that uh, drug of choice for that antitherial uh, drug. Questions number 15. Drug metabolism in fish is essentially occurs in options A, muscles. Options B, kidney. Option C, gills. Option D, skin. The right answer is option B. That is a kidney. Okay. Drug metabolism in fish essentially occurs in kidney. Questions number 16. Antibiotic with high degree of photosensitivity is options A, tetracycline. Options B, gentamicin. Option C, ampicillin. Options D, ceftriazozyme. The right answer is options A. That is a tetracycline. Okay. Uh, tetracyclines actually serve as an excellent example of that phototoxic hazard of antibacterial agents. Uh, among all uh, that tetracycline group, we found that chloro derivatives are the most frequently reported to cause phototoxicity. Chlorotetracycline and doxycycline are more photoactive than tetracycline and oxytetracycline, methacycline or minocycline. Questions number 17. Which of the following is the prodrug? Options A. Inalapril. Options B. Uh, dopamine, option C, ampicillin, option D, prednisolone. The right answer is option A, that is a inala, inalapril, okay. Inalapril is an example of a prodrug. Actually, prodrugs are uh, those drugs uh, that turn into an active form once they enter into the body, okay. Um, example of that, if we see that's a prodrug that exists naturally or were produced unintentionally during drug development includes inalapril, aspirin, psilocybin, uh, parathion, irinotican, codeine, heroin, aljopa and various antiviral nucleosides. Okay. Questions number 18. Lignocaine act by options A. Blocking a sodium channel. Options B. Blocking magnesium channel. Option C, stimulating uh, sodium channel. Option C, D, blocking calcium channel. The right answer is option A, that is a blocking uh, sodium channel. Uh, lignocaine or we can see that's lidocaine. They act by blocking actually sodium channel. Okay. Uh, lidocaine and lignocaine reversibly block uh, sodium and potassium ion channel. And they also regulate intracellular and extracellular calcium concentration through that other ligand gated ion channel. And... Uh, if we see that, sir, lidocaine was the first sodium channel blocker, which is uh, to be identified. Okay. Questions number 19. Point out wrong statement with regard action of insulin. Option A. In liver, uh, that insulin increases glycogenesis. Options B. Uh, insulin is a polypeptide hormone with A and B chain. Option C. Uh, insulin's action is anabolic and it increases uh, glucose storage. Or option D. Uh, insulin facilitates glucose entry into RBC. The right answer is option D that is a uh, that uh, facilitates glucose entry into RBC. If we see that sir, there are two hormones which are responsible for the regulations of a glucose level in blood that is insulin and another is glucagon. That insulin actually decreases uh, that glucose level in that uh, blood plasma by promoting uh, glycogenesis in liver uh, that is a glycogen formations and another is like uptake of glucose by cells okay. While well, glucagon actually increases glucose level in that blood by promoting gluconeogenesis. That's a formation of that glucose from that uh, non-glycogen uh, uh, product, okay. Both these hormones are produced by pancreas. If we see that so glucagon is actually produced by alpha cells of pancreas, while insulin is produced by beta cells of pancreas, okay. Questions number uh, 20. Antagonist of warfarin is options A, uh, protamine sulfate, options B, clopidogrel, option C. Uh, phytominadiol, options D, ethamsilate. The right answer is options C, that is a phytominadiol, okay. The antagonist of a warfarin is a phytominadiol, which is a, actually vitamin K1, naturally occurring compound, which promote uh, hepatic synthesis of clotting factors, that is a second, uh, seventh, ninth and tenth, which is used to prevent and treat uh, hemorrhage, which is related to that vitamin K deficiency. And uh, if you see that's another drugs, then ethamycylate, which is uh, actually acts on uh, first steps of hemostasis, which is a formation of a blood, by improving a platelet, um, that's a blood clotting process, okay, hemostasis, by uh, by improving platelet additions and restoring capillary resistance, okay. Second is a clopidogrel, 
uh, which selectively inhibit uh, the binding of uh, ADP, that is adenosine diphosphates to that uh, platelet uh, uh, P2Y12 receptors and the subsequent uh, ADP mediated activation of that glycoprotein uh, GP2B uh, uh, or 3A complex, thereby inhibiting that platelet aggregations. And the actions done by that uh, clopidogrel grills is actually irreversible. Okay. And another is that protamine sulfate, which is a highly cationic uh, peptide that bind to either heparin or that lower molecular weight heparin to form a stable uh, ion pair, which does not have anticoagulant activity. And this ionic complex is then removed and broken down by the reticuloendothelial system. So, okay. Questions number uh, 21. Laxatives that promote uh, defecations without increasing peristalsis is option C, castorol, option C, B, docosid sodium, option C, uh, phenolphthalein, option D, cascara. The right answer is option C, B, that is a docosid sodium, okay. Laxatives that promote defecations without uh, increasing peristalsis, uh, that is a docosid sodium, okay. If we see that classification of laxatives of purgatives, then we found there's a four types of uh, laxatives of purgatives, that is bulk laxatives of purgatives, which actually increase the volume of non-absorbable solid residues. For example, polysaccharides and cellulose derivatives, example, uh, psyllium, agar, alginate, guar gum, uh, methyl cellulose, carboxymethyl cellulose sodium, calcium, uh, polycarbophyll, malt uh, soup extract that comes under bulk uh, laxatives or purgatives. If we, say this, uh, if we see that's osmotic laxatives or purgatives, then uh, they actually work by increasing water content in large intestines, okay? Uh, example like uh, if we see this organic osmotic uh, laxatives of purgatives that's in two sugar like lactulose polyethylene glycol okay and if we see this non-organic osmotic uh, purgatives that's in good saline purgatives like uh, magnesium salts sodium or potassium salts extra uh, similarly uh, that stimulant uh, laxatives of purgatives that actually increases uh, motility and uh, secretions uh, for example, diphenyl methane, which include phenolphthalein, uh, bisacodyl sodium, uh, picosulfate, okay, anthraquinone groups that is known as Cena, Cascara, Sagrada, serotonin agonist that is a tagacirod, fixed oil that is castor oil, okay, and uh, another group is fecal softener that is lubricant, which actually alter the consistency of feces. Uh, that make them easier to pass. Uh, for example, docusets and liquid paraffin, okay. Questions number uh, 22. Uh, the following interpretation of a dose effect relationship is correct. Options A. Dose response relationship is linear. Options B. Effective dose 50 is 50% 50 of the effective dose 100 dose. Option C. Log dose response curve is sigmoid. Options D. Uh, that effective dose 0 is minimum dose at which there is no effect. The right answer is option C. That is a log dose response curve is a sigmoid in shape. Okay. Log dose uh, response curve actually describe the magnitude of the response of an organism as a function of exposure or dose to the stimulus or chemical after a certain exposure time. Uh, if we see that's low uh, dose response curve, then it is a sigmoidal in shape, okay? Questions number uh, 23, spare receptors. Options A, determine the efficiency of receptor effector interactions. Options B, if it presents in large number, increase the sensitivity of the tissue to the drugs. Option C, that is both E and B or options D are hidden and not available for occupancy. The right answer is option C, that is both A and B, okay. Uh, spare receptors actually uh, determine the efficiency of receptor effector interactions and uh, if it is presents in large numbers, they increase the sensitivity of the tissue to the drugs, okay. And if we see that spare receptors are those uh, receptors, uh, mm, that receptors are maybe considered as spares when the maximal uh, response uh, is elicits by an uh, that agonist at a concentration that does not produce full occupancy of the available receptors. Such condition is known as that spare receptors condition. So, you know, spare receptors exits when maximal drug response is achieved prior to saturation of all receptors. And they are actually not hidden receptors. And uh, uh, when these drugs are occupied, they can be coupled to the response, okay? And we can uh, that demonstrated that uh, these spare receptors by using irreversible antagonist, okay? Experimentally, the spare receptors concepts can be shown when the agonist can uh, still produce an undynamist maximal response in presence of uh, that irreversible antagonist, okay? Questions number uh, 24. 
The following statement regarding ligand gated plasma membrane channel are true. Options A. The ligand receptors for controlling membrane channel are on the cell surface. Options B. The ligand regulates the flow of ions through membrane channel. Option C. Several amino acids neurotransmitters act by this mechanism. Options D. All of the above. The right answer is options D. That is all of the above. Okay. Uh, there are some facts which is related to ligand gated plasma membrane channels are. There is ligand receptors. Uh, uh, that uh, controlling membrane channel are on located on that uh, cell surface. This ligands regulates uh, actually the flow of ions through that membrane channel. Okay, and the several amino acids neurotransmitters acts by this uh, mechanisms. Questions number uh, twenty-five regarding pharmacologic uh, potency and uh, maximum efficacy. The followings are true. Options A: Potency refer to the concentration of a drugs which is required to produce a given effect. Uh, why efficacy refer to the maximal response that can be achieved in high dose and uh, option number c that's clinical effectiveness of the drugs depend not only its potency but also on its maximal efficacy or options number d that is all of the above the right answer is option number d that is all of the above okay uh, this all of the facts are true that is a uh, potency is actually refer to the concentration of a drugs that require to produce given effect while efficacy refer to that maximal response which can be produced uh, by drugs in high dose while well, clinical effectiveness of the drugs depend uh, not only its potency but also its uh, maximal efficacy too. Okay, questions number twenty six. Which of the following is classified as antiviral agent? Option A, vidarabin. Option B, gentamicin. Option C, rifampicin. Option D, novobiosin. The right answer is option A. That is a uh, vidarabin. Okay. Uh, classification. If we see that's classification of antiviral drugs, then uh, there are following types of antiviral drugs like uh, that antiviral drugs which acts on DNA polymerase enzymes like uh, uh, which under which also there is a two type that's nucleoside acting and new non-nucleosides group. Nucleosides uh, mainly includes like uh, vidarabine, uh, acyclovir, uh, gencyclovir, sidofovir, uh, famciclovir, uh, idochuridine, uh, pancyclovir, trifluoridine, uh, valaciclovir. And valgan, uh, ciclovir, okay. While well, non uh, nucleosides groups include uh, phosphonoacetic acid, okay. Second antiviral uh, drugs which acts on reverse transcriptase enzymes, like uh, under which also there is a nucleosides and that's non nucleosides uh, types of drugs. Like nucleosides includes uh, gidovudin, uh, jalcitabin, uh, chanovir, uh, chalvudin, uh, talvudin, okay, uh, lamivudin. Uh, Intecavir, Imtricitabine, uh, Dijanosine, Adifluvir, extra, and non uh, nucleosides groups include uh, Jalaviridine, Ifavirange, uh, Itravirin, uh, Nevirapine, uh, Rimachadine, okay. Antiviral drugs, which is uh, like uh, protease inhibitors, which includes uh, Afazanavir, Emprinavir, uh, Jarunavir, Indinavir. Uh, Nelfinavir, Oselchamivir, uh, Richonavir, uh, Secunavir, uh, Tipranavir, Zanamivir. Okay. Second is like uh, integrase inhibitors that includes uh, Ralchigravir. Okay. Fusion inhibitors that includes uh, Cyclosporine, uh, Docosanol, Infuviritide, uh, Maraviroc. Okay. Signaling inhibitors includes uh, Resveratrol, uh, Rivavirin. Extra. Okay. Questions number uh, 27. Uh, idiosyncratic drugs response. Uh, options A is a form of hypersensitive reaction. Options B is usually caused by the genetic differences. Options number C may be by the immunologic mechanism. Or options number D both B and C. The right answer is options number uh, D that is both B and C. Okay. Idiosyncratic drugs response is usually caused by the genetic differences. Uh, maybe by the immunologic mechanism, okay. Idiosyncratic drugs uh, reactions may be defined as the adverse effect uh, that cannot be explained by the known uh, mechanism of the actions of offending agents, okay. If we see that example of some like idiosyncratic drugs, uh, 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 then that include uh, proglitazone, uh, valproate, uh, emiojaron, ketoconazole, uh, desulfiram, and isoniazids, okay. Questions number 28. Uh, the following organs are innervated by both sympathetic and parasympathetic nerves. 
ऑप्शन ए स्मूथ मसल्स ऑफ गट ब्रोंकस एंड यूनरी ब्लैडर ऑप्शन नंबर बी स्प्लीन स्वेट ग्लैंड एंड रेडियल मसल्स ऑफ आइरिस ऑप्शन नंबर सी आर्टेरियल्स एंड वीन ऑप्शन नंबर डी सेरिब्रल ब्लड वेसल्स द राइट आंसर इज ऑप्शन नंबर ए दैट इज स्मूथ मसल्स ऑफ गट ब्रोंकस एंड यूनरी ब्लैडर स्मूथ मसल्स ऑफ गट ब्रोंकस एंड यूनरी ब्लैडर्स आर इनर्वेटेड बाय बोथ सिंपैथेटिक्स एंड पैरासिंपैथेटिक्स नर्व्स ओके क्वेश्चंस नंबर 29 denervations uh, super sensitivity occurs in options a in the skeletal muscles after uh, denervations options number b in the blood vessels after sympathetomectomy options number c due to up regulation of receptor options number d all the right answer is options number d that is uh, all okay denervations uh, super sensitivity occurs in in the skeletal muscles after denervations okay in the blood vessels after uh, sympathetomectomy Uh, options number C due to up regulation of receptors. Okay, questions number thirty. Uh, the presynaptic nerves terminal of autonomic nervous systems have the following characteristic features. Except options number A, they synthesize, stores, and release transmitters in response to nerves and pulses. Options number B, they are uh, not sensitive to the transmitter released by the neuron. Options number C, the presynaptic inhibitions may be homotropic as well as heterotropic. Options number D, they release more than one transmitter in response to nerve impulse. The right answer is options number uh, that is B. They are not sensitive to the transmitters which is released by the neuron. Okay, uh, that's a, if you see the features of that presynaptic nerve terminal of autonomic nervous systems, then we found that they synthesize, stores, and release transmitters in response to the nerve impulse. That's true. Okay. The presynaptic inhibitions may be homotropic as well as heterotropic. Okay, and they release more than one transmitter in response to the nerve impulse. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you. This much for today.